All right, so we're going to go over some polynomials. So a polynomial is just a um, an expression made up of a certain number of terms. So I have an example here. These are terms, and together it's a polynomial. Okay, Polynom poly just means many, so many terms. So each term is going to be separated by either a plus or a minus sign. So we're going to write a plus sign or a minus sign. Right? A monomial or monomial only has one term, mono meaning one. Binomial, bi meaning two, has two terms. And tri, tri meaning three, has three terms. All right? But a lot of times when we have more than that, we simply say poly just to mean, well, many, many terms. All right? So in each term, we have a variable, okay, such as x, so x is our variable, okay. and we also have a coefficient. Okay. In this case, in our first term, 3 is our coefficient. In our second term, again, x is our variable and we have negative 5 as our coefficient. Okay, The last term we simply call a constant. It doesn't have any variable, it's just a number 4. Now if we have terms that has, have the same variable, meaning both the same variable and the same exponent, we call them like terms. And what we're going to start by doing is we're going to start by simplifying a polynomial expression containing like terms. How do we do that? Well, if we look at this expression, we have some terms that are, well, like terms. We have, here we have an x squared, and here we have an x squared. So this 2x squared and this negative x squared are like terms. Similarly, here we have x if it's just x by itself, it means to the power of 1. So here we have 3x and just x over here. Those are also like terms. And finally, the constants are also like terms. So we collect them, and then we're going to simplify by adding them. So in this case, with our x squared terms, we have 2x squared minus x squared. So 2 minus 1 is just 1 but we don't really need to write the 1, so we just write x squared. Okay, with our x terms to the power of 1, we have plus 3 and plus, that would be a 1, but again, if it's just 1x, we don't write the 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4, so plus 4x. Okay, and then our constant terms, we have a negative 4 plus 9. So negative 4 plus 9 is 5. And that's how you simplify a polynomial, using like terms. You just find the sum of their coefficients. From here, you can't simplify any further. x squared plus 4x, you can't do anything with it. Same with 4x plus 5. Right? It's like trying to add apples and oranges. We have one apple, four oranges, and five pears. So we can't go any further than that in our simplification. All right? So here is where I'm just going to pause the video, and I want you to... All right, so in part C, what we're going to do is we have two polynomial expressions, and we're going to add them. Now, to add them, right, what we do is the distributive property, which we'll do more later, but this is the easiest case because this positive just goes into every term. But I mean, multiplying any number by positive 1 doesn't change it. So the easiest thing to do here, if we're just adding, is to just drop the brackets. So we'll have 4x squared minus 7x minus 5. And we're just dropping the brackets plus 2x squared minus x plus 3. Don't forget to write the plus 2x there sometimes have people leave out the plus and they just write 2x and then they have 52x squared. So make sure you, you keep your signs. 
Now we're just going to look for like terms. So here we have an x squared term, and here we have an x squared term. So we're going to add their um, coefficients. That gives us 6x squared. Then we have an x term, negative 7, another x, negative 1. Okay, remember those negatives are part of the term. All right, so it's not 7 and 1, it's negative 7 and 1. So that gives us negative 8x. And then we have our two constants, which are also considered like terms. We have a negative 5 and a plus 3. So negative 5 plus 3 is a negative 2. Okay, I'm just going to quickly pause it before I move on. All right, for part D, we're going to subtract polynomial expressions. Now, sub to subtract polynomial expressions, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use a distributive property, and we're going to take this and distribute it to every term inside that bracket. But instead of multiplying every term by positive 1, which doesn't change any term, we're multiplying by negative 1. When you multiply by negative 1, what happens is, it changes all the signs inside this bracket. So the first bracket will be fine. We're just going to get rid of the brackets. So we have 4s squared plus 5st minus 7t squared. But then for the next section, we have to change each sign. So here we have 6x squared. But when we multiply that by negative 1, we get minus 6x squared. Then we have positive 3st. But when we multiply that by negative 1, we get negative 3st. And finally, we have minus 2t squared. When we multiply that by negative 1, a negative and a negative gives us a positive. So we have plus 2t squared. Then we need to collect like terms. So first, here we have an s squared term, and here we have an s squared term. Our coefficients are 4 and negative 6. So 4 minus 6 gives us minus 2s squared. Then we have like terms uh, here. Here's an st, the variable st. And here's another term with the same variables st, both to the exponent of 1. Our coefficients are positive 5 and negative 3. So 5 minus 3 is 2. So plus 2 st. Lastly, we have these two terms. Both are t squared. They're both like terms. This coefficient is minus 7. This is plus 2. Minus 7 plus 2 is minus 5 t squared. Going to pause. So in part E, we're going to be multiplying polynomial expressions. Okay. Here we have two binomials that we're going to multiply. Again, we're going to use the distributive property, but this is how it works. This 2x will need to multiply with 3x. Okay. First, multiply the coefficient. So 2 times 3 is 6. Then you have to multiply the variables. Now, if you remember, when you multiply two variables that are the same, you add their exponents. So x and x give you x squared, because you add your 1 plus your 1 for your exponent. Then the 2x needs to be multiplied by not just 4, but negative 4. That sign is part of the term. So the coefficient 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And then we're just left with that variable x. And then we need to do the same here with the 5. Multiply the 5 through into both terms in the second uh, binomial. So 5 times 3x. Well, 5 times 3 is 15. And then we still have that x. And 5 times negative 4 
is negative 20. Our last step is to collect like terms. Now in this case, we only have these two like terms with our x variable, minus 8 and plus 15. Okay, they give us plus 7. Okay. The other two, we can't simplify them at all. So here we have 6x squared plus 7x minus 20. And that's as far as you can simplify them. Okay, for the next problem, I'm going to have you work on them, but let me just give you some hints first. For this one, this 2x, you're going to have to multiply into both terms into the bracket. This negative 3x, not just 3x, the negative is part of the term, needs to multiply into the entire bracket. Similarly, that 3 needs to go into the entire bracket. Once you've done that, then you're going to have to simplify. Now with this one, what I would do first is multiply these two through into their binomials right? and leave the negative 3 for now. So you'll have negative 3 times this big bracket of, for whatever you get when you expand those. Once you're done, then the 3 can go in to every term inside of those brackets. And for the last question, here you're going to have the 3, but then we have brackets 2x plus 3 all squared. The best thing to do is just to write that out twice, because squared just means to multiply by itself. Similarly with this one, you'll have x minus 5 times x minus 5. And then do your distributive property with these brackets, do it with these brackets, and then you'll multiply in um, the 3 and your negative 1. Remember, that's a negative 1. Okay, I'm going to pause there and see if you need help doing it. All right, so those are all the solutions. Make sure you double check them. And if you have any questions, let me know later. I'm going to end the video here so you can pause to make sure you've gotten everything right.